This dramatization is based on Shirley MacLaine's book, Out on a Limb, her account of a personal spiritual quest. Some of the people presented are composite characters. Malibu Beach at sunset. Magic hour, we call it in the movies. It's that time of day between light and dark that always makes me wonder who I am and where I fit in. I'm gonna tell you a story that changed my life. When I passed 40, I began to ask myself some serious questions because I felt something was missing. Something I knew was there, but I couldn't quite touch. Questions like, why are we here? Do we really die? Have we lived before? Is there life after death? Are we just an accident? You know, simple questions like that. <laughs> well, these questions came into focus because of a love affair. Now, this was no ordinary love affair. Well, none of them ever are. But this was an impossible relationship that led into areas that surprised even me. I, I did not understand then why I felt so compelled to be with this man. Well, I do now. And it all began on my opening night at the London Palladium some years ago. Chanting as always. Thank you. Congratulations. How do you do it? Oh, I still think I'm 12. Yes, but I suppose your body believes that too. <laughs> 12 going on 45. Yes, well, well, my husband and I have someone we want you to meet. He can't stay, but he'd love to meet you. Who is it? He's uh, the tall one by the door, the one with the ginger hair. He's one of the new leaders of our socialist party. A good friend, heaven knows why. If elected, he'd probably take my jewels and give them to the poor. He's probably our next Prime Minister. Can you believe it? Finally, we have our very own dashing JFK. 
I know you like the way he thinks. I like the way he thinks already. What? <laughs> oh, yes. Well, his name is Gerald Stanford. He loved the show. I tell you so. Shirley, I'd like you to meet the new Sir Galahad of British politics, Gerald Stanford. Hi. How do you do? Now, if you'll excuse me, I must find Freddy. Thank you, Sarah. Oh, you were wonderful tonight. Thank you. <laughs> you won. You seem to be in very good shape. <laughs> yes, well, it takes care and attention, just like anything does if you want to do it well. Yes, well, um, I really enjoyed the dancing. Oh, that's good to hear. I like to think of myself as a dancer first. I'm a gypsy, you know, I guess I always will be. A gypsy? Yes, that's a term we use in the theater to describe dancers. It's a very appropriate term. I'm always on the move. <laughs> Gypsy, so I like that. I like your tuxedo. Um, <clears throat> thank you, yes. As a socialist, I always feel a little uncomfortable in this get-up. But um, I'm having to give a speech uh, at a dinner tonight, so... I see. Well, you couldn't wear Bermuda shorts now, could you? <laughs> <laughs> but you'd probably look great in anything. <laughs> <laughs> I hope the voters appreciate that. Well, I hope so, too, but I don't think I'm going to put it to the test. Can I ask you a personal question? Go ahead. Uh, how do you get your hair to fall down over your forehead like that? Does it take a lot of time every morning? <laughs> no, I just leave it alone. It seems to work better that way. Excuse me, sir. The car is waiting and you are expected. Thank you, David. I'll be right back. Well, I, I really enjoyed meeting you. Likewise. Good luck on your speech tonight. Thank you. Shirley, I've got uh, Lou Grade over there. He's been asking for you. Okay, this is my agent, Mort Viner, Jerry Stanford. Mort, how'd you do? Nice meeting you. I think if you do the Charleston with him, we may get a deal on the Amelia Earhart thing. Okay, okay, okay. Well, congratulations again. Thanks. <laughs> Who's that? They tell me he's going to be the next prime minister. Graceful, isn't he? I think you threw him a little. I didn't see Jerry again throughout my London engagement. And although I noticed his name in the papers, I'd almost forgotten our meeting by the time I finished my European tour and returned home. Take your hat off, Bella. You're not running for Senate in the kitchen. I can't. I didn't have time to have my hair done. Mm, don't eat the bread. Come on. I'm going on the diet powders right after lunch. Sure. So, the tour was good, huh? Yeah. You had good audiences? Yeah. You had a good time? Yeah. So, what's wrong? Did you ever feel that you're not seeing what you're looking at because you're not real sure about what you see in yourself? Will you run that by me again? All right. The more I see of the world, the more I feel there's something missing, and I feel the same thing in here. Oh, come on. Look at you. You got everything. What could possibly be missing? Tell the man who drives the Wonder Bread truck with four kids to feed that you haven't got it all. I'm not talking about fame and money and success. So what do you mean? You're not happy? I don't know. It's like there's some purpose to being alive, and I don't know what it is. I mean, this can't be everything. It just can't be, can it? I mean, why are we here? Here? In New York? I'm saying there's got to be more. And maybe I realize this because I have so much, you know? I mean, I don't have those struggle and survival problems anymore, like most people do. But not having those problems isn't fixing what's bothering me. So, when did you see Mike last? Oh, that's over a long time ago. You know that. Hello. Hello, this is Jerry Stamford. Who? Jerry Stamford. We met in London after the first night of your show. I was there with Lord and Lady Carlton. They gave me your number. The walk into the closet man. How are you? I'm fine. Will you have dinner with me tonight? Tonight? 
Yes, I'm here on a conference. Oh. Um, tonight. Well, all right, I'd love to. Fine, I'll pick you up at about 7.30. I have your address. All right. I am so surprised to hear from you. Really, I didn't ex... I hung up. Who was that? Jerry Stamford. Well, I am impressed. He's a remarkable man, my dear. Did you read the poverty speech he gave at the UN? Hmm? I'm having dinner with him tonight. Not bad. He's brilliant. Well, I mean, he's very intelligent. Well, you know, intelligence has become my new erogenous zone. These are so lovely. Thank you. Pleasure. Would you like a drink? Actually, no. Can we have a drink at the restaurant? I'm rather hungry. I've made a reservation for 8 o'clock. Oh, all right. I'll get my coat. What's this? It's a necklace I had made for those three stones. They're from East Africa. This is a Maasai chieftain and his wife. Oh, yes, I remember. You wrote about that trip in one of your books. Did you read my books? Yes, both of them. I like them. Thank you. I like East Africa. It's a beautiful place. Have you been there? Yes. Yes, it's beautiful, all right, but I couldn't really enjoy it. Why? Well, the economic situation was so horrendous, the poverty, all I could see were the problems. Really? Mm. <laughs> Should we go? Thank you. It's beautiful. Mm. Have you heard from the Carltons lately? Sarah, we're old friends. She says that she's going to live it up now because when you get in power, these will be the good old days. <laughs> Sarah and Freddie are glorious friends, but they zip around London in their limousine and they haven't got a clue about the realities of the world. Do you get to New York often? When my work calls for it, yes. I like this city. Could do with some cleaning up, couldn't it? Yes, but you could say that about all the great capitals. They're becoming residences of the very rich or the very poor. Where did you grow up? In Manchester. In a working class suburb called Cheltenham. We were part of the very poor. I see. Is that why you became a socialist? <laughs> no. In those days, all I wanted to be was a football player. Yeah. Yes, my father used to take me to matches every Saturday. It was his greatest pleasure, and mine, too. What did he do? He worked in the textile factories when there was work. Um, I remember seeing you for the first time in Around the World in 80 Days. Uh, oh, I was a student at the London School of Economics. I took a queue in the rain for hours. A freckle-faced, red-headed person from Virginia playing a Hindu princess, please. It worked for me. Thanks. Well, what should we drink to? Why did you call me? Well, um, I admire your work, of course, and your energy. But most of all, because you seem to be a happy person, and I like that. It's a lovely compliment. Thank you. Well, now you tell me. Why did you accept? Well, people such as yourself are in a position of power to help change people's lives for the better, and I find that extremely attractive. Thank you. Cheers. <laughs> Gary. Yes. As a socialist, how do you feel about having this limousine? I didn't order it. The conference people did. Why did you accept? It just follows me around. Why don't we walk and see if it follows us? Okay. <laughs> We're going to walk. What 
What's it like being a socialist when you have to work with, with communists? Oh, well, they can be very dogmatic and rigid, but they're people like everyone else. In this country, though, you consider them godless. Well, they are, aren't they? Yes, I suppose they are. But they don't have horns and tails. Besides, in a democracy, one has to recognize them. It's no use ignoring the fact that a lot of the world's people support Marxist views, as my wife is always telling me. Oh, you're married? Oh, yes. Very. Hmm. 18 years. <laughs> Children? Yes, two daughters. Teenagers now. Uh-huh. Um... Are you married? No, uh-uh. No, I'm divorced. I have a daughter, too. Eighteen years, that is such a long time. How do you sustain a marriage in politics that length of time? Well, my wife gave up a promising career in politics to attend to me. Oh, yeah? What kind of career? She's a committed Marxist. <laughs> You're kidding. A Marxist? She can be quite rigid and inflexible in her beliefs. But she's as committed to improving the lives of the disenfranchised as I am. What's it like living with a Marxist? Difficult. See, you like autobiographies. Yes, I like books about real people. You have the best biography of Shaw. Yes. Now, you probably know him as a playwright, but I know him as a socialist. Do you know, he spoke out vehemently against the First World War. The only reason he wasn't jailed was because he managed to say what he did with such wit. We British always admire wit. You know, there's a story about Churchill standing up on the floor of the House of Commons to announce the casualty list after all the first I felt days. so comfortable with him. He announced them. He seemed so familiar to me. It was as though I had known him all my life. This mysterious attraction was part of the puzzle I would put together later. What would you like for breakfast, Jerry? Well, those biscuits look fine. I never seem to have much time for breakfast. Well, I hope you like this tea. It's got a bag in it. <laughs> Is this a watch? Yeah. If I wear a regular watch, somehow time speeds up on me. Well, that seems to be happening in any case, doesn't it? come to London often? Yes, it depends on where my work takes me. The world's such a small place, it seems like a golf ball sometimes. <clears throat> I would like to see you again. Thank you. Would you like to see me again? Yes. Well, I would like you to come to London to see me. Or Paris. I often have business there. We could see each other in either city. These are the private numbers in my office. Okay. I should go. So fast. Right after Jerry left, I got a call from my agent, which propelled it even Charlie, faster. Mort, yeah, we got a shot on the Amelia Earhart script. Right. Now, Fred Zinnemann wants to meet with you in London. Can you get over there right away? 
very quickly, I noticed a kind of synchronicity occurring in this relationship. Things just seemed to fall into place. Friends had let me use their apartment in London. I didn't want anyone to recognize me, so I employed the first of my Greta Garbo disguises. I haven't been able to concentrate on my work. I can't stop thinking about you. I oh, know, me too. Aren't you hungry? Eat is really good. <laughs> yes, I should eat before I go. What yeah. do you mean? I thought you could stay. No, I have to go home. Okay. I can get some time tomorrow afternoon. I'm sorry. This is as new to me as it is to you. But come with me to Paris next week. I don't have that much to do. We could spend the weekend in the country. What are we getting into here, Jerry? I think we're already in it. Present. It was that hair of yours that really did it for me. Right here. C'est un plaisir de vous revoir. Si que vous moi, s'il vous plaît. Merci, on peut accepter. Absolument. Mais comme j'avais jamais vu. Ah oui. De salade lombaise et de plat de chèvre. Oui, merci. Très bien. Everything work out all right? Smooth. The concierge at my hotel promises he won't tell the press I'm in town. Great. Nobody saw me either. So, let's have a fantastic meal. Tell me something. When you do a love scene in films, do you find yourself getting involved? Getting involved? How do you mean? Well, you know, are the love scenes real? You mean physically? Yes. <laughs> well, they're real up to take 25. And then after that... <laughs> and after that, they fall off dramatically. <laughs> oh, my God, there are four English journalists over there. So we're having dinner, so... I don't want to read about this in the papers back home. Oh, no. Jerry. Well, hello, Jerry. How nice to see you. <laughs> Miss McLean, what brings you to Paris? We're working on a project which I hope pans out. Ah, trying to solve the problems of the world, eh? <laughs> <laughs> well, yes. How do you think the vote will go on the nuclear freeze question next week? Just give me a moment here, will you, and I'll come over and discuss it with you. Good. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. 
Jerry, stop acting so strange. People can be friends. I think we should proceed at a slower pace. All right, whatever you say. I'm going to have to spend some time with them. Now? Tonight? What about us tonight? I wouldn't be very good company. I need to think. I... Listen, why don't I just leave Paris and we could see each other sometime again in the future? No, I don't want you to go. Do you know Saint Germain en Laye? Yeah. yeah. Meet me there at that small hotel. There's anyone. When? Tomorrow. Jerry. When you started this relationship with me, didn't you know that anything public would be difficult? No, not really. I suppose I didn't think. <clears throat> Guess I'll just go. You tell them I have an engagement or something, and you do what you have to do. Yes, I will. All right, thank you. It's really been wonderful. My pleasure, thank you. I stood there asking myself, what is this mysterious attraction? And how much was I willing to put up with to find out? Well, we've got plenty of time to get to the airport, dear. Yes, I'm just so sorry we have to leave now. Yes, it's a beautiful spot, isn't it? Well, you can take a place here. This one up. That's right. You get the shoes. Okay. And the blanket. That's right. Straight them up. Time for breakfast? No. Can you find your way back, all right? Sure. I found my way back from wilder places than the French countryside. There you have it. I think you better hang on to this.
The room we had brought to life for that weekend came to a silent stop. The walls closed in on me. Neither one of us had even mentioned the word love. This guy who owns the gallery is a big potential contributor of mine. So if you like a painting, buy it. Live a little. Well, I guess you are doing that, aren't you? Bella, how nice to see you. Miss McLean, a pleasure. Thank you, nice to see you. How's it going, Tom? Oh, great. Are you going to get out of the house and into the Senate? Well, I could use some help. I have a new artist I'd like you to see from the Illuminarium Gallery in California. I think you might like him. I'm quite taken by him. He's Gilbert Williams, a New Age artist, very popular in California, just catching on now in New York. And this is my personal favorite. What do you think? What is it, the Lincoln Memorial after the flood? What is he trying to say with this? Uh, David. This is David Manning. He's an expert. David, meet Shirley MacLaine and Bella Abzug. How do you do? It's a pleasure to meet you. I'm a big fan of both of you. Oh, thanks. In fact, I saw your show in London. You were great. Oh, thank you. David can explain this artist. He's a painter himself. On and off. Are you on or off? Right now, I'm off and doing nothing. Well, how can anybody do nothing? It's not easy. <laughs> well, what is this all about? Uh, I mean, I like it, I guess, but I don't understand it. Well, the only reason I like this is because the painter paints with high-frequency colors. These colors are high-frequency? Yes, these colors are yin colors. Yin? Yes, they're female colors, the colors of intuition. Intuition like in women? Yeah, but don't we usually think of intuition as being a feminine characteristic? Would you say that this was a feminist painting? Well, I never thought of it that way, but yes, I guess maybe you could say that it was feminist <laughs> art. Quiet. You don't know it, but you just contributed to her campaign. I'm glad. I hope she wins. Are you from California? No, I'm not from California, but I just moved back there. Oh, yeah? I've been traveling around for the past couple of years. Really? Where? Well, Europe, India, Africa. I just got back from Peru. Peru? I've always wanted to go to Peru. Don't you have the feeling that you always get what you want? <laughs> Shirley, could you come over here and pay for this? I'm on a tight schedule. All right, I'm coming. Well, thanks for the conversation. Maybe I'll see you in California. I live in Malibu. I know. I read your book. Okay. Thanks again. Thank you, darling. I thought I'd give the painting to Jerry for his birthday. Where's he gonna hang it? I don't know. His office, maybe. When are you going back to London? Next week. This is hard for you, isn't it? Yep. The Prime Minister spoke yesterday at considerable length about the government's sensitivity to the issues of the third world. I put it to him that there is no more sensitive an issue than hunger. People are starving. In many parts of this globe, and it's now up to the nations of the world who can act to do something about it now and prevent what I think will be a disaster of catastrophic proportions. But it could safely be argued that Britain has many more pressing problems at home, unemployment... Yes, of course. I'm fully aware of Britain's domestic problems, and I've spoken on many occasions and proposed creative solutions to these problems that this government continues at its peril to ignore. And your initiative today? Today was a similarly... Happy birthday. You remember? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh, they're lovely. 
You know, I can never find vases for these things in these places. Let me go look. Vases. Oh, yes, of course. Vases. How silly of me. We used to live in this area when we were first married. Oh, did we? And how long will we be staying tonight? Till about midnight. And what happens? <laughs> then I turn into a pumpkin. Oh. I'm glad you can stay, Jerry, because I thought maybe you'd have to go home on your birthday. No, it's not that important to me. It is to me. Sit down. Oh, no. Happy birthday. How did you get this on the plane? With great, great difficulty. I had to sweet talk the flight crew, you see. And I told them that you and I were lovers and that the entire outcome of your election depended on whether or not I could bring this to you. It's called Moon Temple. Um, I think you should hang it in your private office because, see, this yin energy, that will cosmically assure you of the woman's vote. I love the color. It's very high vibrational frequency color, they tell me. What the hell's that? I... I haven't the faintest idea, but I had to buy it so that my friend Bella Absu could get a campaign contribution. She says it's feminist art. She's the one with the hat, isn't she? Yeah, she's great. Do you know about us? Yeah. Sometimes I feel like an island in space. It's okay, Jerry. She's my friend. It's all right. I'm not worried. Fresh tomato. Fresh tomato, dear. Corn step up here. Fresh fruit. These will be just fine for me, thank you. I didn't expect you so early, what's up? My daughter was looking for something in my wardrobe and asked me in front of my wife why my clothes smelled of perfume. Took me so off guard. I acted really guiltily. Jerry, how was it left? I just think they've forgotten about it by now. I hope so, anyway. This is the pit sneaking around like this. You mean it's the pit? Hello, Mr. Stanford. Do yeah, you know that? Miss McLean, have you two met each other? Oh. Shirley McLean, meet Jerry Stanford, our next Prime Minister. Really? Good Lord, how do you do? Thanks, how do you do? It's really a pleasure. I can't get over it. The two of you at the same time shopping in our neighborhood. Well, everyone I know seems to be running for office. I hope really? you win. Thank you. Bye. Nice lady, isn't she?
I played Reno in Vegas with my live show, In Between Visits to Jerry. Oh, my relationship with him became an obsession. I did begin to have fun with my disguises, though. Some of them would have been rejected by a bag lady. If the government continues with these cuts in what it laughingly calls its housing program, <laughs> it will be the people below the poverty line who will suffer, and the numbers of these people has been increasing daily. <laughs> it's no secret that this government has been insensitive to the needs of the ordinary working people of this country. So, in summation, I maintain that the poverty of one individual encroaches upon the comfort of us all. This bill is a step in the right direction. It may be unpopular, but innovation requires courage. We have the courage. As I look at the right honourable member opposite, Mr. Chairman, I see a hypocrite and a coward. <laughs> Supporting this bill requires compassion. He has half a heart. It takes intelligence. He has half a brain. It takes courage, but he is only half a man. How was your day? Typical. <coughs> so, what did you think? Hmm. You knew I was there. Well, it's hard to miss that disguise. Hmm. So, what did you think? Well, then, were you performing for me, or do you always act like that? Like what? No, like you own the place, Jerry. You were acting like you were the Prime Minister already. You know, I know you're passionate about the poor, but... Wow, you were aggressive. Yes, I was. So tell me more. Oh. You just seemed so insensitive to your colleagues, you know, calling one of them half a man and stuff. Is that the way it works over here? Richard Gaines, you see. It's half the fun of it. I love to make them squirm at their own inconsistencies. Otherwise, why am I in it? Yeah. But would you have acted that way if you'd known television cameras were recording you? Why, do you think I'm too intense for television? Should I soften my approach from that point of view? No, I don't think that's the point. I just... Well, you were so combative with people you're trying to change. It just seemed contradictory to me, so... I told you, I hate the hypocrisy. I hate the way they pussyfoot around. And they're liars. No. You're not a liar. You're not hypocritical. What do you mean? I'm consistent with my political beliefs. I'll tell the truth, even if it's damaging to me. Everybody knows that. Oh, no. There's a lot about you that people don't know. Like what? Come on, like us. <laughs> What's that got to do with politics? Mm, all right. What about all those personal phone calls long distance that you make to me? What about them? Yeah, so who pays for the calls? Uh, it's a government phone. Right, who pays for the government? What are you trying to say? Jerry, you called somebody who happens to be wealthy half a man today and a hypocrite. Mm -hmm. See? Now, mm -hmm. what if that guy looked up your telephone log and discovered that all those phone calls that you make to Las Vegas and to Reno and California and New York are to me. Would you tell the truth about that? Maybe, maybe not. It's not important. Now, who's the hypocrite here? What are you driving at? This is a personal matter. That's what I'm driving at. You seem to think you can separate your personal beliefs from your political values. Oh. 
Well, but that's the kind of thinking that got the world where it is today. Wait. Now, hold on there a moment. You've gone from a petty cash problem to the destruction of civilization as we know it. What's really upsetting you? Well, you can't deal with the truth. The truth is that you can't deal with me being a married man. That's it, isn't it? Well, I am sick to death of sneaking around like we are, hidden away in some foreign apartment waiting what, for a few hours like to it? be together. You know, I feel like I'm living in a cage. You knew what you were getting into. You knew I was married. What's the difference now, hmm? Tell me, what's changed? You accused me of being aggressive and insensitive. What do you think you're doing to me? You're angry because I'm you're stuck. I'm not angry. You are. You're angry because you're stuck in a relationship that you can't control. Stuck? Yes, so you spew out all this hostility stuck. without regard for my feelings. Now, that's what I call You want to see stuck? I can get up and walk out of here any time I want to, and I don't have to cover up my life while I'm slipping around the back streets. You know something? So can I. I thought you came to London to see me. I did. So where were you all night? Well, I went out after you left. Can't you find better things to do with your time? <laughs> what do you mean? Where did you go? Well, I called some friends, and I went to the White Elephant, and we talked, and then I went dancing with them at Annabelle's. Who did you dance with? Jerry. I'm leaving on the noon flight for California. I was back in California to rehearse for my new tour. I hadn't talked to Jerry. I was definitely, positively, and certainly not going to call him. Mr. Stanford's office. May I help you? Yes. Is Mr. Stanford in, please? No, he's out of the country. Can I take a message? Oh. Uh, when do you expect him back? In two weeks. Where is he exactly? Who shall I say is calling? Some 14 carat bimbo. Thanks. It was awful. I couldn't concentrate on my dancing. Yet, at the same time, I was so glad I had my work to fall back on. Oh, yeah. And a hitch, right? Is it a hitch or just a tap? Just a little touch. Ah. Oh. Did I do wrong? That's it. That was exactly Where are your hands? Here, mine are. Stamina, really. I gotta see what happens. Get 
your hats. We're going to start with Fosse. Okay, you ready? No, I'm not One, ready. One, two, three. Okay. Now I'm ready. Okay. Very busy. It's a hit. What's it about? Can't you tell? The ballet. I know what you're thinking, but I must be firm. I told him I do not dance in movies. Yeah. So they signed Barishnikov to the part. Mikhail Barishnikov? No, my tailor, Irving Barishnikov. Who else is in it, really? And Bancroft. And, of course, you. It's perfect. It goes right after the tour. Turning point. This looks interesting. Hey, but do me a favor. Don't analyze it. Just read it. Can you read lips, Mort? That's physically impossible. Hey, listen, McLean. I don't go running off to Europe once a month. I mean, what do you do over there anyway? I go to Switzerland for hormone therapy. I know how to make a hormone. How? Be nice to her. Oh, Mort, I really love your feminist humor. Yeah, well, I'd stick around and tell you a few more, but I got a girl double part. Hello. I thought it was you. The on and off again painter, New York Art Gallery, right? David Manning. How are you? <laughs> Fine. Any messages for me? Okay. So what are you doing here? Oh, I was over here at this gallery, and they told me that you were over here rehearsing. Yeah, I'm getting ready to do my tour. So, is the painting on again? Well, how'd you like to come over and uh, see some of my work? Some photos of Peru? Okay. I'll be done in about an hour. Great. And uh, maybe after that, you and I could go get something to eat? Well, okay. I can have two beans on a leaf. I'm in training. <laughs> well, I'm not. Okay. Okay. <laughs> you know these faces... In some way, they don't look Peruvian, you know? They look Tibetan, with the high cheekbones and those black almond eyes and the black braids, don't you think? Yeah, well, there's a theory that these mountain people were actually from the Himalayas in Tibet, that they walked across Siberia, across the Bering Straits, came down through North America, and uh, eventually settled in South America in the Andes, which are in Peru. Oh, that was a long walk, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. You study anthropology or something? No, I just read a lot. Want to get something to eat now? Yeah, but tell me something first. When you photograph cultures like this, do you tend to see the beauty or the poverty? Oh, well, as an artist, I see the beauty. As a human being, I recognize the poverty. But as a, as a spiritual being, I think everything is happening just as it should. What do you mean? I mean that we are mind, body, and spirit, and that you have to feed all three. I mean that I'm hungry. Let's go. I thought about what David had said. Everything was happening just as it should. What would Jerry say to that? And what did that say about our relationship? Hi, did I miss any messages? Okay. Thanks. Hello. Shirley. Bella, it's you. What kind of a greeting is that? I'm sorry. How are you? You can hear it in your voice. He still hasn't called. No, he hasn't. Why don't you call him? Because I don't want to. He's dealing with hypocrisy, guilt, and deceit. Sounds like a Washington lobbyist. Bella. Well, you know how I feel, darling. Nobody's good enough for you. When do you go on tour? First of next month. How are you feeling? Surprisingly OK. OK, that's all I called for. Thanks, Bella. I love you. I love you, too. Yeah. Hello?
Hello up there. Hi. It's me again. You want to go for a walk? Okay. You hungry? Always. Okay, I'll just change and I'll bring you something. Oh, hi, how are you? Doing? Good. You? Okay. Want a peach? Oh, peaches, goody. You got any cream? <laughs> Come on, let's walk. I didn't eat breakfast this morning. I've been out here since sunrise. It's so beautiful. It is. It really is. So, how's your painting coming? Great. Gallery's gonna do a show for me. Oh, yeah? Turns out I went to art school with the owner. <laughs> Ooh, that's a lucky accident. Well, I don't believe in accidents. Everything. Happens like it should. Why do you always say things like that, like there are no accidents? There aren't. Like that. Like what? Like those three stones you have around your neck. Where'd you get them? They're from a Maasai chieftain I knew in East Africa. Yeah, yeah, I know, but how'd you get them? Do you remember? Of course I remember. It was about 10 years ago. Some young guy with long hair and a beard came to my door. He said that the Maasai chieftain had asked him to deliver them to me, so he did. I like the way I had them mounted, don't you? See, that's health. That's wisdom. And that's security, I know. How do you know? Because I brought them. What? I was the young guy with the long hair and the beard that brought them to you. I was on photographic safari in Kenya. I ran into this uh, Maasai chieftain. And he thought that because I was an American that I'd know you, he gave me those stones. So when I came back to California, I looked up your address and I dropped them off. You were the guy who gave me these? I was the guy. Why didn't you tell me this before? Well, there's a lot of stuff I haven't told you. Oh, really? Like what? Like, there's a purpose in everything. Why do you say those things? What does that mean? Because it's true. What? You take this peach, for instance. Its purpose is to go zinging into the sea. This is making a complete mess out of me. No matter. Come on, let's just walk. Just walk. We spent the whole day together. There was a lot David wasn't telling me, but in other things, he was very open. I found myself telling him things I rarely told anybody and asking for his opinion. When you've been around as long as I have, but you start asking yourself, what's it all about? And I don't do it out of any unhappiness or anything like that. I mean, I've got problems and complications, but that's not what I mean. Well, I always found that happiness is right in your own backyard, to quote Dot from The Wizard of Oz. You're a big help. My own backyard is the Pacific Ocean. Exactly. What is that supposed to mean? It means that everything that you want to know is right inside of you. You are the Pacific Ocean. You are the universe. That sounds so hokey, so California. I am the universe. <laughs> well, I think that once you understand the life you lead and the lives you've led are connected to God, you'll no longer feel that something is missing. Did I hear you say the other lives I've led? What, past lives? You ever heard of the Bodhi Tree Bookstore? No. Well, it's on Melrose Avenue. Why don't you meet me there tomorrow afternoon? I got a few things I want to show you. <laughs> Reincarnation. Yeah. Oh, my God! Hi, David! I can't believe the last time you saw him. Hi, girls. They were another life. <laughs> Good life. Have you ever really been in love with anybody? Yeah, I was once, but I lost her. Man, it was sort of a strange experience. Tell me. I'll tell you about it some other time. Judas H. Priest. Peter B. the Baptist and George W. God from Greensboro, as my father used to say. Looks like a flat tire. This is not my day. Must be a reason. Spare me the metaphysics till we get in the bookstore. Come on, come on. I'll help you change your tire. I don't want to change the tire. That's why I have a rented car. 
they do all the work. I don't own a car. I don't want to deal with it. What is this place? Okay, what am I supposed to read? Well, you could read some of the more or less esoteric books on this wall about reincarnation itself, or uh, you could just read Plato, Pythagoras, Ralph Waldo Emerson, Walt Whitman, Voltaire, Goethe. They all wrote on the subject. You're telling me that all of those people believed in reincarnation? Yeah. Voltaire said that he didn't find it any more surprising to be born lots of times than to be born once. Do you really believe all this? I mean, really, that we lived before? I mean, do you honestly believe that? I really do. So that would mean that we had known some people before, right? Yeah. Everybody's had deja vu at one time or another, right? Haven't you ever had it with certain people? Like you know them right away, you don't like them for no apparent reason? Huh. I have felt those things, yes, but I kid around about those things. Well, maybe it's more important than that. So, dig in. And I figured out why you got that flat tire. Why? Because you're supposed to spend a lot of time in here. I'll be around. Oh, boy. There are a few times in your life when you can point to a simple act and say it changed everything for you. I guess it was meant to be, just as David said. It felt almost guided. From that day on, I began reading everything metaphysical I could get my hands on. Starting with the doctrine of reincarnation, I learned that it was as old as recorded history, that the Greeks, Egyptians, Buddhists, Hindus, all believed in the eternalness of the soul, which came back lifetime after lifetime for the purpose of learning. And karma was a companion to reincarnation, karma being the law of cause and effect, what we put out, we get back. And I learned that what a soul sows in one lifetime may not be reaped till a much later lifetime. That was what was known as cosmic justice. But what I was learning made me see that with reincarnation, there was no need to fear death. It made me think differently about the world and what was going on in it. It made me think about my own life and the people in it. And that's when I got interested in whether or not Jerry and I had known each other before. Was that why we felt so compelled to indulge in our impossible relationship? Could it be that we had things to work out from another lifetime and we were using this lifetime to do it in? Hello? Who? Jerry! Hi! I've been saving the taxpayers' money. You may have noticed. Yes, I noticed. Well, how are you? I hear you were out of the country. Yes, I had to go to Brussels. I've just got back. Oh, how's the election? Fine. Are you still going on tour? Yeah, we're going to uh, Australia, Japan, then Mexico City. How about Hong Kong? No. I have a conference there in about six weeks. Oh. I'll, I'll have to browbeat my agent, see if he can get us a theater. I miss you. I miss you, Jerry. I want to see you. I miss you. Let me see what I can do, OK? I'll call you tomorrow. OK, listen, I wanted to
Thank you. You know, I've been doing a lot of thinking lately. Have you ever wondered whether you might have lived before? I think a lot of people have, especially lovers and songwriters who write songs about lovers. When you're awake, the things you think come from the dreams you dream. Thoughts have wings, and many things are seldom what they seem. Sometimes you think you've lived before all that you live today. Things you do come back to you as though they knew the way. Oh, the tricks your mind can play. It seems we've stood and talked like this before. We looked at each other in the same way then. But I can't remember where or when. The clothes you're wearing are the clothes you wore. The smile you were smiling, you were smiling then. But I can't remember where or when. Some things that happened for the first time seem to be happening again. And so it seems that we have met before and laughed before. I've got the conference all day tomorrow. But I was thinking tomorrow night we could maybe have dinner out in the New Territories. It's terrific, Jerry. Because we're dark tomorrow night. So, how'd the show go? Great. I put in a new number. I put in a number called Where or When, a Rogers and Hart tune. Do you know it? No, I don't. Oh. Well, it went great. <laughs> I've been having the most fun on this tour, Jerry. Meeting so many interesting people, really. You know, a lot of them are talking about what they call mm, new age thought. What's that? Well, it's the idea that maybe this isn't all there is. What isn't? Well, for example, uh, do you think it's possible we might have known each other before? For what? Known each other in another lifetime. Reincarnation, Jerry, you know. Reincarnation? Oh, my God. Oh, I see you believe in it. <laughs> of course I don't. Why do you say it that way? Because it's a fantasy. It's for people who can't accept life as it is here and now. But some of the greatest minds on the planet have believed in it and believe in it now. Surely. It's the most obvious way the rich control the poor. Look at India. Those poor souls believe it because they haven't got anything else. If they weren't so obsessed with life being better the next time around, they'd pay more attention to what's happening to them now. It would make my job of helping them a damn sight easier. Yeah, but see, my point is that if over a series of lifetimes, we all might have been rich and poor, and there was a good reason for each... There's no justification for poverty. Life is what you make it now. Not the next time round. Well, I guess everybody's got their own truth. What are you doing? 
Calling room service. Come here. I thought we agreed that this was going to be the perfect romantic time together. No big issues. Just us. Okay. I know I won't have you very much longer. It's silly of me. It seems we've stood and talked like this before. We look at each other in the same way. Then. <laughs> but I can't remember. Whoever when. Excuse me, do you know this book? Which one is that, dear? Uh, a Dweller on Two Planets. Oh, yes. It's a classic in metaphysical literature. It was channeled by a young lad of 18. What does channeled mean? Spiritual entities sometimes use human beings as mediums through which to pass on information on the other side. Apparently, the spirit guide who spoke through the boy told about an earlier incarnation he had had in Atlantis. It's, it's quite wonderful, really. Really? Well, it was the strangest thing. I was just standing here reading, you know, and this book fell right smack into my hands. <laughs> Those kind of things happen to me quite often. Like now. Haven't we met somewhere before? Well, I'm playing down at the Majestic Theatre. You might have seen my show or something. Of course. Shirley Jones. No. <laughs> it's McLean. Oh, that's right. You're wonderful. Thank you. I love talking about spiritual matters. We in England have a rich tradition in it. Perhaps you've heard of the British Society of Psychical Research, made famous by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. You know, Sherlock Holmes. Oh, yes. Yes. They've been studying the phenomena of mediumship for quite some time now. Of course, you Americans have Edgar Casey. Who? He was known as the Sleeping Prophet. There are lots of books on him. I, I believe we have some. Um, yes, here. The information he channeled when he was in a trance is absolutely thrilling. You know, it never occurred to me that, that souls could actually be speaking from the spiritual dimension. Oh, yes. These souls are communicating to us until they decide to incarnate again. See, I never made that connection before between souls waiting around and reincarnation. No one really dies. All souls are alive. But some are in this physical dimension and some are not. Mm. That's a lovely thought. It is, isn't it? Well, oh, no, no. They're a gift. It would give me so much pleasure. Well, isn't that sweet? Thank you. That's very kind of you. Mm. I will enjoy these. Goodbye. And contact the British Society of Psychical Research if you're interested. The British have always been open to new frontiers. All right, I will. 
It's not been my experience so far. Have you ever thought about giving us up? Have you? No, I haven't, but of you. No. Good. Mm. Look, I know you're on this tour, but I'm going to be in Hawaii next month for a conference. Mm. Is there any way that you can make it? Billy, what are the dates? 20th and 21st. Mm. <laughs> What's so funny? I just talked to Mort. Mm -hmm. And we have to switch theaters, so there'll be a delay, and I'll be free on those dates. <laughs> and you'll come? Yes. <laughs> Well, that's a lucky accident. Mm -mm. I don't believe in accidents anymore. No. We need the phone banks in by next week. We've only got six months, so move! Yeah. Hi, Belichka. Where are you? Hawaii. How's it going? Well, great. I arrived four hours ago, so did he, and I haven't seen him yet. That figures. Those North-South Conference meetings can go on and on. But it's so typical. I sneak around like Mata Hari, and then I sit in empty rooms waiting for him to call. How can he call if you're on the phone? <laughs> I'm calling to ask a dear friend about her campaign. How's it going? Your dear friend is five minutes late for a fundraiser, and this election is going to be close. No, no. Not in my book, Senator Epson. Thank you, my darling. So, when are you coming to New York so I can see you? Well, turning point starts in the fall. I'll see you then. Great. I miss you. I love you. I love you, too. It is so great to hear someone say that. Why, he doesn't say that. We never mention the word. Oy vey. You said it. Bye. Bye. <laughs> we must never move. We must stay here for the rest of our lives. Mm. If this gets you hooked. <laughs> <laughs> it's you. It's really you. Come with me.
Look at the colour of that sea. We don't get sea like that in England, you know. Here, hold these. I'm going in. No. Come on. Come on. All right. You know, that, just then, is the happiest I've ever been in my life. Really? You know, the last election I won, I was really depressed for days. <laughs> what do you feel when you lose? <laughs> well, funnily enough, I feel challenged, infused. If I don't have struggle in my life, I'm not happy. Mm. I really must look into that, wasn't you I? Must yeah? that. <laughs> you must look into that. You must look into that. What do you want from me? You want us to be happy when we're together? Are you happy? I think so. Um, that I've been spending a lot of time lately thinking about whether or not I might have lived before. And if I knew more about that, I'd be a lot happier. Are you serious? <laughs> Jerry, the first time I met you, I felt I'd known you before. Does that sound crazy? No, I suppose not. Somehow I recognized you. It was the deepest feeling. Like a memory, almost. And our meeting wasn't an accident. It was inevitable. Destiny is the poet, I'd say. Yeah. <laughs> I know that there's something much, much more going on on this planet than meets the eye. That I know. Tell me what you think it is. You know, something to do with the spirit. Uh, you know something, when I, when I think this way, it makes me feel so happy. Like there's a God, and you and I are both part of it. <sighs> Jerry. I don't believe in God. I believe in my work. Jerry. I love you. 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 Why is it taking me so long to say that? It doesn't matter now because we both said it. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> How am I going to reconcile you with the rest of my life? Hmm? I don't know. lost by less than one and a half percent. It was the men. Two liberal men carved up one liberal woman who could have made it happen. But that's water under the bridge. Did you see Martin? Yeah. He's writing a book about our life together. <laughs> he doesn't want me to read it. It's probably just as well. So, how's Turning Point doing? It's going great. We shoot in front of the Russian Tea Room tomorrow, and next week we go back to California. 
So, what do you want to talk about? Jerry, I don't know what to do about it all. Think he's going to leave his wife for you? No, I don't think so. I don't even want him to. Well, something's got to give. I mean, Hawaii was pretty intense for both of you. Yeah, it was. Oh, Bella. I can't help having this feeling that I'm involved in this relationship with Jerry for a reason bigger than I'm aware of. What do you mean? <sighs> like we've met before in another life. In another life? Yes. Yeah. You're crazy. Listen to me. Just, just hear me out, okay? What do you mean you lived before? I mean, you have some proof of this. Of course, I don't have any proof of this. It's a feeling. You know, reincarnation. Oh, brother, these are the guys I see on the corner in the orange sheets with the bald heads ringing their little bells. Shirley, let's get serious here. I mean, you're a practical person with a practical problem. You want to go live in London? No, I don't even want to go to London, not with his wife living there. Why? She's probably part of this past life thing, too. I wouldn't be surprised. Oy vey. Oy vey was right. I returned to California. There seemed to be no convenient way to see Jerry. And even if there had been, I wouldn't have known what to say to him. So I continued my reading, and then I began to take notes on how I was feeling and what that might mean to the relationships in my life. David seemed to be the only person I could talk to. Do you think it's possible to love someone who doesn't believe in God? I think it'd be a tough go because it's like saying that they don't believe in themselves. I mean, isn't it difficult to love somebody who doesn't love himself? Yeah, it's like they don't know who they are, you know? I mean, if you don't know who you are, you can't love yourself. Why don't you ever get frustrated when you feel like you're not really being yourself? Yes, all the time. Right. Well, that's what all the masters have tried to help us with. What masters? You know, Christ, Buddha, the Indian avatars. They were really just master politicians who went right to the root of the problems in society. The individual. Some of them said if... Everybody believed that he was a part of God. The kingdom of heaven was within. And that if we took responsibility for that, that we wouldn't get so frustrated with ourselves, with ourselves or with anybody else. But it seems like it takes multiple lifetimes to come to that simple realization. Why isn't reincarnation in the Bible? Why isn't it taught in Christianity? Ah, well, that brings us to the controversial Second Council of Constantinople in 553 A.D., which was so dominated by the Emperor Justinian that the Pope, in protest, refused to attend. So, Justinian got his way. And in spite of the fact that reincarnation could be found in many of the writings of the early church fathers, his council condemned the idea of the preexistence of the soul. Emperor Justinian? What do you want to do a thing like that for? <laughs> well... I guess once you get used to the idea of being an emperor, you don't want to have to believe that someday you might have to come back as a pig slopper. <laughs> yeah, but why did the church go along with it? Well, I think at first Justinian pressured them into it, but then later I think they went along with it because they just didn't want people to assume their responsibility for their own karmic destiny. Hmm. Karmic destiny. Well, you know, if I really believed that I'd lived before and was going to live again, and that everything I put out there would come back, there would be no doubt in my mind that I'd be completely responsible for everything that happens in my life. Exactly. That's mind-boggling, David. I mean, when you think of what that really means, you want to know a good exercise that helps you get in touch with the realization that we each have God inside of us? Exercise. Here's what you do. Just stand up, hold your arms out like this, and say, the kingdom of heaven is within. I love myself.
The kingdom of heaven is within. I love myself. No way, better than that. Say, uh... Say, I and God are one. No, wait, 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 better than that. I got the best one. This is the best one. Just say, I am God. David, I can't say that. See how little you think of yourself? You can't even say the words? I am God. I am God. A little louder, please, with maybe a little more conviction. I am God. I am... Look, if I'm God, what does that make you? Well, we always see in others what we see in ourselves. I am God. I am God. I am God. I am God. I am I God. God. I am 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 God. torturing the inmate. Of course. I'll have him in shape in no time. If they live through it. <laughs> Harriet! Yeah? Keep them moving. Okay. And if you live through it, you'll love her as much as I do. <laughs> Let's get going. Okay. I think I'll walk with you for a while. Great. So, I uh, hear through the grapevine you're finding yourself drawn to spirit. Is that true? Yeah, I guess you could say that. I'm into a whole new dimension of myself anyway. Oh, isn't it wonderful, Shirley? Is it? Are you doing the same thing? Of course. What else is there? Yeah, I've been guru hopping most of my life, Sai Baba and all that. Now I know it's me who has all the answers. Now, I know I should plunge on ahead, but I don't know quite how to go about it, you know? Are you interested in meeting someone adventurous? A man? <laughs> kind of. <laughs> what do you mean, kind of? He used to be a man. What's he now, a showgirl in San Francisco? <laughs> no. <laughs> he isn't incarnate right now. Isn't incarnate? You mean a spiritual entity, Kat? Yeah, that's what I mean. They're the only people we're talking to these days. Kat, come on. Seriously, there's this magnificent spiritual entity you must meet. His name is Ambres, and he channels through a man named Johansson. Trans-channeling, is that what you're talking about? Yes, that's what I mean. Johansson is a simple carpenter who lives in Stockholm, and his teacher, Ambres, uses Johansson as an instrument to speak through. Really? Oh, surely his teachings are magnificent. I was in Sweden last year. You really should treat yourself. Stockholm, huh? <laughs> Don't you need to buy a pair of skis or something? Wouldn't you like to see Brigitte again? She knows Ambres, and she could translate for you. No, I need a mountaintop I can sit on. Jerry, I miss you. Yes, I miss you, too. Can you meet me in Stockholm next week? Stockholm? Stockholm, Sweden? Oh, God. <laughs> the synchronicity. What? <laughs> nothing, nothing, nothing. <laughs> I know it's cold down now, but I'm going to be there for about two weeks. I have something important I want us to talk about. I cannot believe this. Um, should I get my own hotel? If you wouldn't mind. I'm staying at the Grand. Now, if you phone me on Monday morning, use the name Edwards, and leave a message with the number of your hotel. Okay. Jerry, I love you. 
I love you, and I want... Jerry was so romantic whenever he said goodbye. And then it hit me. What did he want to say to me? Was he going to propose something more permanent? Oh, boy. Was I ready for that? Katarina says hello. How is she? She's great. She seems to have been very inspired by the teachings of this ombre. Oh, uh -huh. so I'm looking forward to seeing what this is all about. Really, you can imagine. Yeah, all kinds of people are coming to see Ambers now. He's getting very popular telling people about their past lives. Ambers teaches us that we all have the power and knowledge to do anything we want to, that our positive energy is awesome. What does he say about our past lives? He tells people about them, but uh, he always insists that this lifetime is the important one. You'll see for yourself when you meet Ambers Thursday. Dear, thanks so much for picking me up at the port, Brigitte. You make me feel so welcome. We're glad to do it. Swedish hospitality. I know. If there's anything we can do for you, just give us a call. Thanks, Lars. I have some other things I have to do while I'm here, but I'll see you Thursday for sure. Indeed, you will. Well, Mr. Bond, we certainly do get around, don't we? I'm sorry. It's not the way I'd like it. I just have to be so careful. No. You're going to have to change your hotel. What else is new? Do you want some coffee or cognac? Right coffee now? would be fine. Excuse me. Can you bring some more coffee, please? Thank you. I have something to say to you. Mm -hmm. It may sound like a speech. I've been running it over in my mind for weeks. Go ahead. You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> I love you. But I'm not strong enough to tolerate the consequences of our relationship, either in a public or a private sense. Oh, I know it's a terrible thing to say, but our relationship could lose me this election. Now, I can't do that to my party, and I don't want to lose my seat in Parliament. And my... my wife and my children have, have been... so patient with me over the years. I can't do anything to hurt them. There, there, there have been times when I've, I've worked to the point of exhaustion and they've tolerated it. Do you see how morally unacceptable this is to me? Yeah. Hmm. Why didn't you tell me all this on the telephone, Jerry? Because I was afraid I wouldn't see you again. You don't understand why I do or that I do, which... Oh, I don't understand either. Okay, what should I do? It would make me desolate if you left me. God, if you would just... You know what? If you would just love yourself more, 
Really? You'd be freer to love me and your wife and your family and your work, too. <laughs> I can't understand that. How can I love myself more? No, you've, you've spent your whole life, it seems like, devoting yourself to helping others. Unaware completely of what you might want for yourself. Yes, well. All right. Now, as I see it, there are three possible solutions. One, we continue this deception, both politically and personally. Two, we affect your solution. And three, we... Wait, wait. What's my solution? To leave me and walk away. And three, to... to to reflect a little That's longer. That's what we're doing. We're reflecting right here. Isn't that what we're doing? Yeah. yeah, yes. All right, to recap this. I don't want to mess up your marriage or your political career. I just want us to be happy with the time that we can spend together. That's all I want. Well, I guess that buys more time, as you politicians would say. Yeah, quite. <laughs> Look, um, I have a meeting about 200 miles from here. I won't be back till the day after tomorrow. Can you find something to occupy your time? Sure, I can. I'm very resourceful, you know. I have some things I want to do while I'm here anyway. What's that? Oh, it's... I'll tell you about it when you get back. <laughs> you know, I, um... I like to be admired. But the irony is... Not by those people who really mean something to me. <clears throat> that about says it all, doesn't it? I left my problems with Jerry behind me in Stockholm. An hour outside of the city, I was going to meet my first trans-channeler. Okay, so tell me this again, Birgitta. Mm -hmm. This entity called Ombres is speaking from another dimension, mm -hmm. right? And he's going mm -hmm. to take over Sturr's body? That's right. He speaks an ancient Swedish dialect because he's hundreds of years old. But I will translate it for you as he goes along. Could Stuart possibly be speaking from his own subconscious? I mean, have you guys thought about that? Yeah, I used to think so. But there were so many things about me he couldn't possibly have known. You'll see, Stuart and his wife are very simple people. Oh, no, have Shirley. Yeah, the come. Shirley, this is Mr. and Mrs. Johannes. Hello. 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 <laughs> I'm sorry I don't speak English very well. I'm very glad you're here tonight. Thank you. This is my husband. Hello. Do you do? Mm -hmm. He says he's very glad that you are here tonight. Men det bäst vi börjar nu för nu kommer en annan grupp lite senare för det. We must start now because there are other groups coming later. Okay. Kan vi få stillhet?
I wondered where Stura would go in order to make room for the entity Ombres. And suddenly, Stura's right hand began to shake. Birgitta said there was always an electrical vibration whenever Ombres was about to enter or leave his body. Jag vill signa detta tempel och den som befinner sig är rik. Välkommen Ambres. Mm. I noticed that Stura's eyes were closed. Brigida said that Ambres didn't want to use Stura's eyes. Yes, good morning. I am here. Have you any questions for me? Ambrose is saying greetings and talking about the quality of energy of the group. I would like to ask how everything started, if you could tell us about the creation. She is asking him to explain creativity. Someone says that the creation has a beginning. Och den har ju slut. Vad är det? Jag vill påstå att... Ambrose är säng. The birth of creativity is here in this room. And it's in every human being. Det är människans skäl. And so he explained the creativity of man and God. He talked of God's love for all living beings. And he said that man is a co-creator with God. That we each have God within us. And that with each progressive lifetime, we spiral upward with a greater understanding of that God within. He said it may not appear as though we're progressing, but we are. During the next hour and a half, people asked Ambrose all kinds of questions, covering a wide variety of topics. They ranged from personal matters to spiritual energy. Someone asked about the future of the planet. Ambrose answered with a spiritual prophecy. Someone asked about Atlantis. He said that it disappeared because their technical knowledge exceeded their spiritual wisdom. Someone else asked about the Great Pyramid at Giza. He said that it was a library in stone which we would soon learn to read. The range of his knowledge seemed unlimited. Then Turid said her husband was losing his energy, that Ambres would have to leave his body. Ambrose is about to give us his final blessing. So, Lord, when you see them, love them, and fill their hearts with light. Amen. Amen. He says he hope you learned something. He needs to rest now. I want to say something profound, but uh, my mind is spinning. I, I, I've just never seen anything like this before.
I missed you. Mm. Oh, I found oh. this beautiful walk up here behind the building. Look, something's come up. My wife has arrived from London. I'm sorry. It's going to make things very difficult for us. Hmm. It's all right. I understand. I can't even stay for lunch, let alone a walk. I have to get back. I'll phone you tonight if I can. OK, I'll be at the hotel. Come on, I'll drive you back. No, I want to walk. It's beautiful up there. You sure? Yes, I understand. But I didn't understand. I could feel Jerry pulling away from me. He was gone again for three days and three nights. I wrote. I wrote everything I was feeling. I wrote to understand myself. I wrote to understand him. I wrote to understand the trans-channeling session I had seen. I wrote to understand about my life. Whenever he called, I told him I was writing. He said he was glad I'd found something to keep me busy. I stayed in my hotel room. I ate only Swedish crackers and butter. I watched six layers of snow fall and melt on the street. I watched the ferry boats glide in the icy water below. I couldn't exercise. I was too depressed, too driven. I became the furniture, the carpet, the cold hotel room. I went out to walk in the silent snow. Had Jerry and I written these roles for ourselves? Was I with him only to learn about myself? Was he with me to learn about himself? Oh, how I longed to talk with him about everything I was thinking and wondering. Finally, at the end of the week, I brought it up. So I just feel that I might know me better, and you better, and us better, if if we looked into this question of living before. How would you do that, my darling? You always use my darling when you're patronizing me. I'm sorry. I don't mean to. I think I could find out through trans-channeling. What the hell is trans-channeling? <laughs> There's someone here in Sweden. And he goes into a trance and channels disembodied spiritual entities. It is so fascinating, what? Jerry. Yes, and what happens is people come from all over asking questions about medical things in their past lives. It My is God, so Shirley, have you been going to mediums? Why do you make it sound like a dirty word? I think we have to talk about this. I mean, what exactly is it that you've been doing? I'll tell you if you'll listen. Try to be a little open-minded about it, though, because it's really an interesting other dimension. Imagine a telephone. You know, when you talk on a telephone, you're not talking to the telephone, you're talking to the person who's speaking through it. Isn't it obvious this stuff is crazy? These mediums are psychos. They're weird. They're dragging up imaginings from their own subconscious. You can't actually believe that they're communicating with spirits. They're not communicating with spirits. They're channeling, Jerry. They're not even aware of what's being said. Whatever they're doing, it's rubbish. They do it for money, exploiting oh. gullible people who want to be told some sugary nonsense about dead relatives or some other oh, damn on. thing. Edgar Casey took no money, and this guy only takes what people volunteer. Why, in the name of God, do you have to get involved in this sort of thing? You just said it. What? God. I want to know what God is. I want to know where we fit to God. I want to know where we come from, and I want to know what happens after we die. Aren't you interested in whether this is all there is? I don't want to know. Why? Because I have to address myself to real problems, real issues in this world. I understand them. I don't understand God or disembodied spiritual entities or whether we've all lived before or... That's not reality. Are you going public with this? Is this what you're writing about? Partly, yes. But I haven't even thought about whether I'd publish anything. Well, don't. Take it from me. It would be a very stupid move. Who are you, Stalin? People are going to think you've gone round the bend, and quite frankly, I'd have to oh, agree with on. them. Oh, come on. Oh, Jerry, stop that. You know that's not true. I'm just investigating. I'm exploring. You... And I do not understand why you won't discuss this with me. There's an expression. If you want to get to the fruit of the tree, you have to go out on a limb. Well, I'm simply not prepared to do that.
You went to a medium? A Swedish medium? Yes. And Jerry got very upset. Why? Did he go too? Oh, it's too complicated to go into. Listen, I'm changing planes. Can you meet me in California? When can you come? I've got to talk, Bella. Actually, I'll be out there in two weeks. I got news for you. I'm going to run for mayor. Great. Finally, a decision. Yeah, well, I have some fundraisers out there. Californians love me. Besides, they got money. Well, stay at the beach with me and save on a hotel, you know. We'll commiserate together. Okay. Bye. I walk the Calabasas Mountains, happy to be off by myself in nature, trying to sort out some of the contradictions flooding through my mind. If I pursued my search, what would happen? Oh, Jerry certainly found it very threatening. Was our relationship going to break up over this? And was he the first of many who would think I'd gone too far out on a limb? Hello, Shirley. Hello, Cat. Oh, yeah. Good to see you. How are you? Great. Hey, I saw Ombres. Did you hear? I heard. <laughs> what did you feel? Amazed. <laughs> I don't know what to think of that. It's not it. what you thought. That's what you felt. Well, I couldn't very well feel in Swedish, you know. I would like to feel it in English. Do you know any medium that speaks English? As a matter of fact, I do. I just met him. His name's Kevin Ryerson. He's studied in depth at the Association of Research and Enlightenment. You know, the Edgar Casey Foundation. Yeah. Does he do private sessions? You think he'd come to my house? I don't see why not. What's he like? Hello, I'm Kevin Ryerson. Hello, Kevin. Come in, please. Thanks for coming. He looked like something out of an old Humphrey Bogart movie. <laughs> excuse me for staring. I don't know a lot of trans channelers. Oh, excuse me, I don't know a lot of movie stars. <laughs> May I leave my vehicle parked outside? Sure. Uh, nobody pays any attention to those signs down there. Well, would you like some coffee or a drink? Or uh, no, no alcohol. Alcohol can interfere with the accuracy of the trans-channeling. So he wasn't into drinking spirits. That was a relief. Oh, I, I see. Okay, I'll just get you some tea. Make yourself at home. That hat. Even Bogey wouldn't wear a hat like that. Then, as he plopped it on one of my statues, I wondered what I expected a trans-channeler to look like. What would a credible doctor look like? What would a credible psychiatrist look like? How did you get into this? Oh, a number of years ago, I was working with a group in meditation, and spontaneously, I fell into a trance state, and a spiritual guide came through. So you mean you just go into a meditation and it happens? Well, at first, it was a little unsettling, but eventually, when I began to realize it helped people, I just relaxed with it and let it transpire. Hmm. So what's going to transpire here? Well, there's four different entities it may speak through. There's an entity by the name of John, who many people consider the most knowledgeable. He speaks in a form of biblical lingo. Kevin outlined what seemed like a comic strip of unlikely characters. I felt myself picturing them in my mind as he described each one. Who may speak through. His favorite incarnation was that as an Irish-Scottish pickpocket. Tom is a very earthy entity. He can be very witty. And some people consider him just a little bit too amusing to take too seriously. OK. Um, well, do we each have our own spiritual guides? Every soul on this planet has their own form of guidance or their own spiritual guide. Your guide or your guidance is available to you if you'll just make yourself aware of it. Well, shall we begin? Let's begin. Um, should I turn off the lights or what should I do? It would help if you were to dim the lights for spirit. OK. How's that? That's good. And, um. Can I use a tape recorder? Is that all right? Taping is encouraged. Take some notes here if I want to. OK, let's go ahead and begin. OK.
I'll see you in a little while. I wondered how he could put himself in a trance state so quickly. John, identify yourself and state purpose of gathering. Oh, my God. I felt like I was in the twilight zone. Uh, my name is Shirley. Um, I'm, I'm speaking to you from Malibu, Malibu, California. Purpose of gathering. Uh, I don't know, I don't know why I'm here. As such. I figured as such meant okay. We sense that you are a seeker, that you have his investigations, and we are familiar as though with thy vibrations and same. We? Could you tell me who we might be, please? We are those who have known thee in past lives. The channel speaking as a soul has had many incarnations, so therefore speaks in the plural we. Are you a guide of mine? As such. I see. Why is this phenomenon of trans-channeling so difficult to accept? Because persons may not remember themselves from their disembodied state. They must indeed come to know themselves as more than what their five physical senses would reveal. They must come to know that all of their pains, their fears, of this lifetime are but the experiences of that which has passed. Is this true understanding? Yes. Excuse me, but really, on what do you base your information? That which you call Akashic. What is that? The Akashic record is the sum total of all that exists, not unlike a collective unconscious. Yeah. Uh... Even so, don't you think that what you're saying is just a little bit too simple? All truth is simple, but it is more so that it is designed to be easily revealed. Well, yeah, but if it's so easily revealed, how come we don't know it? Until man accepts that he is indeed part of the God truth he seeks, he will always have difficulty. Ye are a co-creator with God. You're telling me that I'm part of that God truth? As such. Well, I could get really arrogant if I thought I was that close to God, now couldn't I? <laughs> Why did you shout at the ocean that ye are God? How did you know that? Thy thoughts are clear, and by thy vibrations we may know thee. Pause. There is an entity desiring to speak. <clears throat> Deep in the heart, dear. <clears throat> McPherson here. Here to be Tom McPherson. And how would you be doing out there? <laughs> well, now, I'd have to be saying, I wasn't expecting quite a reaction that so soon. It was so funny. I could actually feel a new personality coming through Kevin. Is there something wrong with Kevin's throat? Oh, I don't think that you'd be finding that I'm just sort of like adjusting a wee bit more here to the instrument. But the lights in here are a bit on the bright side. I would be requested. Might you have something about that I could dim the lights with? Okay, just a sec. Perhaps something acting as a blindfold or something. How about one of these? Yeah, let me see what you have to offer here. Why, <laughs> I like the vibration of this one. Indeed, I like its vitality. Yeah, let me see. And now, if I might be tying it up a wee bit here. You see, if the light's too bright, it keeps too much of the instrument here. And I believe it's me that you want and not the instrument. <laughs> Wouldn't that be right? Yeah. Now, 
There's a bit of a rawness to the young man's throat. Would you be having perhaps a bit of a brew about that? I could do something with it. Yeah, this is the tea that I gave him in the cup. Oh, I see. Now, just a moment. My dear lady, I know that it's a bit polite to serve a wee bit of tea, but this is absolutely infinitesimal. Okay. <laughs> Will I be doing something about this? Now, just a moment. I believe you have a mug about. Would this be so? A mug? I believe so. I can get a mug. No, that's quite all right. If you don't mind, I'll be helping myself. I believe that if the sense is correct, we might have something just about over here. Even with the blindfold, he found the bar behind my wall. How did he do that? If there's a pub to be found, leave it to an Irishman to be finding it. A fine bit of a masculine mug. I don't know exactly why you hid it in a closet. I do believe Irish pickpockets think better with mugs, you know. <laughs> what can we be doing here? Do you have a spot of your tea over here? Not to worry. I won't be spilling a drop of it. I can see it like a luminosity, not like a rainbow, you know. Were you really an Irish pickpocket? I believe that I was an Irish pickpocket. But it was a bit more of a cover trade for myself, as I used to sort of like, what would you be saying? A bit more like a diplomatic spy, I believe. I work for the English crown, I'm sorry to say. Why, why is there such resistance to the soul as a realistic fact? Because there's no money or gold in it for anyone who desire to research it. And people who do look into these things or research them are occasionally made to look ridiculous. After all, didn't a friend recently tell you that in order to reach the fruit on the tree, you have to be going out on a limb? That really did it. I hadn't discussed what went on between me and Jerry with anyone. You've got to be patient with your Jerry. After all, he is an Englishman, you know. My God. Oh, do we have a revelation here again now? Yeah, could I, um... Ask some questions about some of the past lives I might have had, please. I do believe that if you be taking this here. Very good. And now, if you might be taking this also. You do that very well. Now then, I believe if you'd like to be making some other inquiries, I'd be departed. But may the saints be looking after you. God bless you. you desire to proceed? Yes. You sense as though that the individual whom you desire to proceed forthwith is though currently resides in the areas known as the British Isles. I can't believe this. That's right. He had lived as though many lifetimes before, as indeed as though as man and wife. When? It was in those time periods known as Atlantis, some 300,000 years past. In those days, you had many incarnations, as male and female. And during the incarnation inquired of, you were female. Did we get along? In those days, you would find that the individual is, though, succumbed to the phenomena also of the intellect, or to be as the intellectual. This did not work as though to the advantages of that union. However, he was doing important work involving cultural exchanges with the extraterrestrials. Extraterrestrials? As such. There were indeed as though extraterrestrials in the Earth in those days, even as indeed there are in these. Now? In these days? Even as ye have nations, one advanced more than the other, there are planets more advanced than thy own. What kind of knowledge are they bringing? The only knowledge that there truly is, knowledge that God is within, within man, from whence all other knowledge springs. These extraterrestrials, are they involved with the same struggle of inner knowingness that, that people like me are? You should not set them up as though as a phenomenon of divine beings or as godlike beings. They are their brothers. Will I ever see one? You should seek out the one who works with visual arts. Someone who works with visual arts? Who? 
The individual of the three stones that are united in the triangular form. David? For he also acts to thee as the spiritual guide. Speak to this individual of the extraterrestrial matters. Ponder these things that indeed have been said, for they will bring thee wisdom. We must as though now end the inquiries. We do not desire to tax the instrument's energies. I'm sorry. Of, of course. I'm sorry. Thank you very much. Seek to be at peace with those things which indeed you receive from spirit. For you'd find that they indeed are to further the Father Mother God's work. And indeed, you are that work. Welcome this to Father Mother God's light. God bless you. Amen. Hello. Hello. Hello, I'm here. How did it go? Well, when that Tom person came through, he said that you wanted a blindfold, so I put it around. He was bothered by the light somehow. And, and then he wanted this mug. He said that, um, well, he knew there was a bar behind my wall there. And he said that Irish pickpockets think better with mugs in their hands. And I didn't know he could manipulate my body that well. What time frame do you have? 8.30. I need to be picking up my lady. Kevin almost seemed like he was still in a trance, as though he wasn't quite conscious yet. How do you feel? I feel fine. Their energies actually nurture me. But how do you feel about being used as an instrument like that? Every person needs a purpose in life. Maybe it's my karma to be a human telephone. Good night. Kevin, thank you for coming. I really appreciate what you're doing. I don't understand it, but maybe someday I will. Take it at your own pace. Good night. Good night. I was vibrating with a strange, almost magnetic energy down my arms. I had just talked to two spiritual entities who not only knew things about me that no one else in the world knew, but who also said that I had known Jerry and David in a past life. Was the puzzle falling into place, or was I into some kind of fantasy dream? But if it was real, was the most significant part of the puzzle the profound truth that God did not live outside of each one of us, but inside? Hi, Shirley. I'm so happy you're home. Guess what I did? I had a session with the trans channeler, and this guide came. What are these paintings you've done here? Are these UFOs? Uh-huh. Have you seen crafts like this? Well, these are based on sightings up in the Andes in Peru. People see them all the time. Not me. See, this entity said that extraterrestrials are on the Earth, visiting the Earth right now. And now you're really telling me you've seen these? Uh-huh. I don't believe it. What else did he say? Sit down. Nothing. He told me about some personal stuff, a past life I had with someone. Want some tea? Sure. We talked about you. He said you're a guide of mine. That's certainly true. Wow. Well, I guess we were all guides for each other. When are you going to tell me what's really going on? I'll tell you when the time comes. It's weird. It's creepy. How do you know this trans-channeling person wasn't acting? Because I know acting. I do it for a living. For my money, the guy was not acting. There was some other kind of energy in there or something. Maybe he was demented. I don't know what it is, Bella. I just know what I heard, and it made sense to me. Like, all this stuff is... It's making sense to me. 
What is it about California that brings out all this spaced out new stuff? It's not new. It's been around for centuries. Abraham Lincoln invited mediums to the White House and took their advice. Did you know that? Well, what do you expect from a Republican? Ella, what did he tell you about Jerry? He said that we had been married during several incarnations in Atlantis. Atlantis? Did it work out then? No. Actually, it seems that Jerry was as obsessed with his work back then as he is now. What kind of work did he do? Um, he was, uh, involved with cultural exchanges of some sort. With who? Extraterrestrials. Shirley, I don't believe I'm hearing this. I mean, this is not you. I really feel I should send for the guys in the white coats and have you taken away. Look, I know it sounds strange for me to say it, but we read these books. They are full of information of stories of legends all handed down from the beginning of recorded history. UFOs are real. Right, and why is it that every single head of state I've talked to, I mean, and people from Pierre Trudeau to Jimmy Carter, every time I bring up the UFO thing, they sort of clam up, like, don't ask. And it's not a put down. I mean, they've seen evidence, and they know there's something going on that they can't explain. Hold it. Just let me do this. Hello. Hi. Congratulate me. I just sold a painting. David! How terrific! Yeah, so I'm on my way to Peru next week. You want to join me? What? Let me be your guide. You got to see this place for yourself. But, David... It'll change your whole life. One more step on the spiritual path. You know something? I will. Great. I had a feeling you would. I'll make all the arrangements. Okay. Okay, goodbye. Well. That is that. What's what? I can't go to your fundraising garden party next week, Bella. I'm sorry. Why not? because I am going to Peru to look for UFOs.